Mercury. Gosh, who loves Mercury? It's just the strangest stuff, isn't it? Now this, what's so strange about Mercury is it's a, it's a metal, but it's also a liquid at room temperature. Mercury is a heavy liquid. What does that mean, heavy? Well, I'll illustrate what I mean by heavy. This is a cannonball, and that is definitely heavy. And gravity, this invisible force, pulled it down. Do you see that? <laughs> You're pretty used to that, aren't you? OK, let's see. Heavy cannonball meat, heavy liquid. OK, we'll take that off. And what's going to happen here, eh? Is it just going to go right to the bottom? <laughs> wow. That's incredible, isn't it? A floating cannonball. <laughs> Let's hear it for the cannonball. <laughs> OK. All right, so that's heavy things, things where gravity is really playing a massive force. Now I'm going to show you a material that, that goes completely the opposite direction. I have here the lightest solid in the world. It's so light, you can't hardly see it. Can you see that? Now this stuff is called aerogel, and it's 99.8% air. So it's only 0.2% solid. In fact, you can hardly see where it ends and the air begins, because there's only 0.2 difference, isn't there? And it's got this blue tinge. Have you noticed that? Now, that's because the, it's a foam. It's a glass foam. And the, the holes in that glass foam are so small that they scatter light in the same way that light is scattered in the sky. So while you're seeing, it, you're seeing it's blue for the same reason the sky is blue. There's no pigment in there. So this is as close as you're ever going to get to holding a piece of sky in your hand, right? It's almost completely sky. And you think, well, God, that's incredible, 99% air. What, what could anyone possibly want with a material like that? Well, it turns out that NASA used this to collect space dust. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? So yeah, I think you have to give a big round of applause for Aerogel, the lightest solid in the world. <laughs> how, how are we doing with our common sense? It's looking less like a solid now, isn't it? Um, so let's see how big we can build. This is the Burj Khalifa, and it's the tallest building in the world. It's 0.8 of a kilometer high. So that's half a mile high. Of course, I look quite big next to it, don't I? <laughs> look like a giant. But actually, if you shrunk me down, this is what I would look like. <laughs> it's really high. It's absolutely a magnificent building. But, well. What happens if I'm the size of Everest? Now, <laughs> here I am. I'm a giant. <laughs> and here I, if, if I was to look at the Burj Khalifa now, that's how high it would be. It's down here, tiny. <coughs> so why can't we build anything bigger? That seems pathetic. We, you know, we've gone to the moon, and yet that's all we're building. Well, we've got a model here of the Earth. Here's, here's England. Here's where we are. And if we were to put on a scale the Burj Khalifa, you wouldn't be able to see it. We'd have to have a microscope to see it. So it's down there somewhere, but we, we haven't seen it. And if you would put the mountains on here, again, as you saw with the pictures of the Earth, they're tiny. So this Earth, you can see, has this incredible round of sphericals. It's all very, very, very smooth. And that's because the Earth exer exerts an enormous gravitational field. It's huge. This enormous mass is exerting a force on you, me, that, that cannonball. How far do we have to go to get out of its hole? Well, I'll show you. I'm, going to just, I'm just going to say, if we were to build a building this high, not quite this high, actually, a bit higher, and 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 a bit higher. If we were to build a building, and this is the scale, we built a building 36 thousand kilometers high, we'd be what's called a, a, a geostationary orbit. So, so satellites up there, sort of a, uh, communication satellites up there, they stay in a fixed position with regard to the Earth as they satellite around, and they're not sucked back into Earth. So if we can get up there, 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth, then we can escape the Earth's gravitational field, this, this tyranny of gravity. So why haven't we done that? Why haven't we managed to do anything close to that yet? So I'm going to need a few volunteers from the audience to help me. OK. So we've got, yeah, we've got one there, a lady there. And uh, let's get a guy. Yeah, yeah, go on. And one more. Yes, 
Why don't you come down? Yes, all right. <laughs> We're going to have a competition now, and there will be prizes. And the competition is to escape the Earth's gravity. <laughs> OK? So, um, and what I'm going to try and do is, obviously, you're going to have to try and jettison us off into space now. Um, and if you make it as far as the, uh, as the roof, we will open it for you. So don't worry about that. Don't limit your ambitions. Are you ready? OK, we're going to do a count that, everybody. Three, two, one, go. Whoa, the old, oh, we did it twice. Whoa, I don't know. We'll have to consult the referee. And then letting that go, all right. But let's have a look at the action replay. OK, and up they go. Oh, it's the old back lips. And I think that got it for you. Well done. <laughs> Technique. OK. Now, that was really sporting of them, but it wasn't very impressive, was it, really? Because, <laughs> I mean, half a second is all we could. And basically, that, you know, they're no better or worse than most of us, aren't they? So gravity is this incredible tyranny on our lives. It's constantly gluing us to the floor. And that seems really annoying to me. So I started thinking, well, let's try and work out how to levitate. So here we go. Thought, should be able to make a levitation machine. Got in touch with some material scientists who had some ideas about this. And they gave us some of this material, which is called a superconductor. And when you cool superconductors down with liquid nitrogen, so we're, we're going to get down to minus 193 degrees centigrade, then these superconductors, they, they repel magnetic fields. So the idea is this. Gravity pulls magnet down, and we repel the magnetic field with the superconductor, and they equal each other, and we get the magnet to levitate. All right, let's see if it works, though. Is it working? Oh, ho, ho, ho! <laughs> OK. Yes. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking there's a tiny little thread, aren't you? <laughs> I know. So look, just to prove to you that there isn't anything underneath or over the top, nothing over the top, and? Oh, yes. The thing about that was you had a magnetic field opposing the gravitational field exactly. Turns out that it's, as the magnet gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that gets harder and harder to do. So I thought, well, I'll invent a levitation device that can levitate me. So off I went to my garden shed, and I came up with a levitation device. Which, and this is the world premiere of this device. And I think you're all going to be very impressed, because this really could be the future of us getting off this planet. Do you want to see it? Yes. I don't, you don't sound that interested. <laughs> Come on, do you want to see it? Yes. OK. Oh. I know, you're clapping, but I know you're not that impressed. <laughs> but just bear with me on this one. This is a levitation device. Look, I'm on the floor. I'm stuck to the floor. Now I'm not. Right? I mean, before we had a magnetic field repelling my gravitational force. But now, inside this piece of wood, as we call it in the technical, there is an elastic force field, which is exactly matching my gravitational field. So. I've got, there's an elastic force in there. At the atomic scale, the atoms are being pulled apart exactly to match my gravitational force. So this is fantastic. Here I am. And, and it's not just happening to me. It's happening to all you now, right? Because all of you are sitting down, and your gravi gravity is still acting on you. Gravity is not this force that just acts, just switches on when you're falling. It's acting on you now. And it's pushing you down to the ground. And if there wasn't an elastic force field underneath your bum now, let's all just think about our bums. No, not too much. That's enough. Um, so it's that elastic force field underneath your bum. So it's the cushion, and then it's the, and it's the floor, isn't it? So if you think about it, the floor in here, in this whole auditorium, is having to put up with quite a lot. Because before you lot came in here, there wasn't an elastic force field. And now there is a massive elastic force field in here holding you all up. So that's great, isn't it? I mean, buildings just do that for free, or do they? How do, how, let's get a feeling for how much elastic force field they're having to put up with now. 
in this room. OK, so how do I do that? Uh, anyone got any ideas how to calculate the total gravitational force acting down now? Anyone? You got an idea? A force meter? A force meter, yes. And what do we call force meters? In the parlance, in the bathroom, perhaps? Anyone? Yes? A scales. You. You're good. OK. So it's a scale, isn't it? Well, we, if we're going to measure this audience, we need a scale that will weigh you all, don't we? So let's get in a big scale. What we thought we could do is kind of get you all to sit on this scale. This is, we borrowed these from Shrek. <laughs> he has them in his bathroom, and he let us lend them. For, he's, he's on a diet at the moment. He's obsessed with his weight. What we want to do is try and measure the audience, how much 